Jai Hind, Jai Bharat, and welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achin. The chips. Chips are in everything, in what I do, in what you do, and what everyone does. Chips were supposed to actually make our lives easier. Is it going to be that the future wars and the future conflicts or the future disagreements between two nations would be on chips? The chip war, the chip development, and then so many other versions of the chip which are actually being discussed today. To discuss the this whole game of the chips, what is happening with it and where, of course, India stands is the most important question out of today's talk. I have with me Vice Admiral B. Kannan, who's going to tell us something that he discovered long time ago as to what the significance of this particular little thing called the chip is. Sir, first and foremost, thank you so much. And welcome to Dev Talks for the first time. Hoping to see you here many, many times more. Thank you very much, Mr. Ashkent, and uh, for this opportunity as well as for uh, uh, this topic, which is so close to my heart. Uh, it reminds me of the time I had uh, spent in college in electronics engineering when we didn't have the chance to uh, come across a chip. It was in the early 70s. And all that we could see at that time was the leading edge of the technology was the transistor, uh, which, is, uh, which has grown into uh, ICs or integrated uh, circuits a little a decade and a half later. Now you find, uh, as you had mentioned, the semiconductor chips are part of almost every activity uh, which we are engaged in, uh, be it our uh, professional work, be it your computers at home, be it your domestic appliances, uh, be it your entertainment, uh, be it uh, in healthcare, be also in uh, to a certain extent in education. So almost every activity in which we are engaged in, uh, we are uh, utilizing uh, semiconductor devices. In fact, they are driving the advancements, not only in uh, digital communication, but also in uh, various other aspects of uh, uh, medicine, engineering, industry 4.0 applications. You're going to 5G communication very soon. And all the digitalization which is happening around us has got this small little chip uh, residing inside uh, a small uh, equipment uh, or sitting on a PCB, which is inside an equipment. And they are uh, playing a huge role. You and me read today a lot about uh, artificial intelligence and many of those applications which are uh, happening uh, are uh, are being implemented in a very, very efficient manner uh, through customized uh, ICs or integrated circuits which can uh, perform the function for which they have been designed exclusively and there is a lot of breakthrough in this which has happened in the last five six years and uh, this is going to come in a big way into not only in the industry but also in uh, defense and aerospace so as i see it uh, it is the chips which are going to be uh, the heart of uh, the economy of a country and it will depend upon how um, resourceful are you in uh, in, the, in the aspect of chip whether you are uh, making it yourself or you're, buy, you're able to buy or somebody is able to give you whenever you want and you're able to develop applications on for them, I think a, a lot of it will depend upon uh, this particular capability uh, which has not taken off in a big way in our country. And uh, I think we have a fairly lot of catching up to do on this. Oh, indeed. There's I, one question. Yeah, I also want to tell you at this point of time, uh, when the chips came in uh, 80s, uh, we were uh, very happy in uh, importing the chips, which we have continued to do for the last 40 years, and use it in various applications, uh, which uh, we have designed ourselves, or we have just productionized it in India based on a design given by somebody. Of course, there have been some improvements in our role. I'll touch upon it later. But the fact is, uh, chips which are made uh, from natural resources uh, like sand, 
they actually made from sand silicon dioxide that's a that's a basic material based on uh, semiconductors are made which we have enough in our country natural resources but india somehow had not invested in uh, human capital uh, on this front in the 80s and 90s when we knew this this was coming in uh, we somehow uh, neglected the field of uh, uh, metallurgy uh, which would have enabled us to set up some facilities by which you can make uh, silica which comes from silicon dioxide which is the basic material which is used for uh, uh, making chips the rest of the world has gone past us the advanced countries have gone past us very much and today when we look at that we we are uh, we are seriously handicapped and we have got a lot of catching up to do uh, if you're thinking of making a, a semiconductor device uh, in the country the initial uh, uh, activities of the government were through two public sector laboratories one in chandigarh and one in uh, pune uh, they had limited success in whatever they were attempting and i think uh, uh, they they didn't get enough uh, encouragement uh, they didn't get enough resources perhaps and uh, finally we we were just dependent upon uh, chips to be imported from from somewhere initially it was west and now a lot of shift has happened uh, in the last 20 years Uh, it is more in the east in the asian side rather than the west because they have all caught up uh, and they gone ahead so we we have uh, a disadvantage uh, in our start which is happening just about uh, uh, what a year back it has started and uh, i hope that uh, the country will be able to progress but there are some areas which uh, Uh, which have been uh, successful for india and i'll touch upon that as we go along thank you for that sir that's a that's a you know very even uh, introduction to the subject one thing that the which brings about the importance of this particular thing is the fact that two countries are ready to go to war over it i mean it's not physical fighting war with bullets flying but it's it's sort of a trade war happening between uh, china and america with regards to the production export and the expertise of chips so that one one e- even if one is not very well introduced to the electronics and the and the scientific aspect of chips one can realize the importance of this particular good uh, this particular piece of equipment and piece of electronics which is leading two countries to a battleground uh, talking about the the requirements sir today you got you know the enhancement of chips is actually at a very very fast pace Uh, you have these 14 nanometer 28 nanometers 14 nanometers 7 nanometers and now they're talking about even further uh when we talk about those scales uh is it easy for a country like india to literally jump into the game and start doing the research at the top end or do we need to climb up the ladder right from the bottom and uh you know go up into the game okay okay uh, so first a little point about uh, us uh, early 90s and till almost till about uh, 2000 90 percent of the world's production was just confined to uh, two three countries japan us uh, europe etc and there was nothing from the east it is only after 2000 you found that korea china and uh, they all started uh, designing and uh, building chips now for us to understand uh, what are the engineering activities or what are the technical activities which need to be gone through by a country like india in making a chip is that a chip production has essentially four steps four important steps the first one is you convert ordinary sand silicon dioxide into silica crystals they heat it up and then they're molten and they're separated and then they're centrifuged and then they're made into a particular shape and the silica crystal is cut into thin wafers very thin wafers and those wafers are 
a normally available international market today if somebody wants to uh, start making from step two and not do step one. So if you want to start from real scratch, that means you have to start converting uh, silicon dioxide into silica wafers, which are very thin and almost the size of uh, six inches or eight inches or 10 inches diameter, right? That's the first step. The second step, you, after you've got the wafer, you superimpose on the wafer, on the thin wafer, your circuit, which you want to realize by forming, let us say something like 5,000 or 10,000 transistors on, uh, on a wafer, which is just about eight inches dia. So how you do it is, it's a series of process. You do some deposition of material and then you do some etching, you do some photolithography. It's a very complicated process. But at the end of it, you got a wafer which has got these electronics items or components realized on them, on the wafer. And mm. normally they are in uh, clusters of, let us say, uh, 1,000 transistors in one cluster. So if you take a wafer, which is about 8 inches dia, it's, it, you will have about 20, 30 clusters on that. So you cut the silic uh, wafer into 20, 30 small squares. And each square which is about few mm uh, by few mm. That square contains about 10,000 transistors. That is called a die. So the second step in IC manufacture is the wafer has been obtained and you produce a die. Now the third step is you have to make a circuit. Let us say you want to have an application for your a simple humble application like your for your car uh, automotive. You want controls. You want a chip to be uh, designed for your car. So you go to a chip designer and say, I want a car uh, which is controls, which will operate in this manner. These are the protection things, etc., to be done. So he will design a chip taking dies which are available in the international market. I told you earlier, dies have been cut and kept aside. So there are dies which have got 10,000 transistors. Some dies have got only 5,000 transistors. Some have got some filters, some have got some other sensors. So all these dyes are available. They are like components, but internally they have a lot of transistors. So you buy the uh, necessary dyes from international market, put them together to form a circuit. And all this you, you can do on the computer. So this is called design of a chip. So a designer sits on the computer and picks up various dyes which are available connects them up internally and say, okay, this will do the function provided I put a software like this and this will do your function in the car. It could be for something much more complicated, uh, like in a healthcare equipment where you do imaging, there the chip could be more complicated. But he develops this design and gives it back to his customer saying, I have got this design ready for you. You can go ahead and go to step four. So just to recall, step one was converting sand to silica wafers. Step two was cut the wafers after imposing on them, uh, grow on them the circuit uh, for the various components called dyes. And the third is go to a, another person, go to a person who will design in it, the chip which you have in your mind, which you want for your application. And he will select various dyes which are available in the market make it for you and give it back to you saying, this is your design, go ahead. So you go to step four. Step four is a person who looks at the design document. Okay, I require these dies. I'll get this. He'll pick up all those dies, put on an epoxy layer, and then he will put them and test it, do the external connections, and then bond it and make it into a small little chip, which may be uh, some uh, two and a half centimeters by two and a half centimeters. So, these four steps one has to go through. And India is comfortably placed in step three. We have been designing a lot of IC chips 
for our customers in the West, as well as for some other countries in the East as well. We design chips. Our companies have been doing good design work. Uh, on an average, they have been doing something like uh, 1,500, 2,000 chips in a year, designing for various customers. So step three, we have been doing well in India. Step one, zero. Step two, zero. And step four, zero. So if you want to do today, get into semiconductor manufacture in the country, I think you have to forget step one. Uh, it is too late for us to get into uh, basic metallurgical science and uh, try to find how to refine the sand and convert to silica gels and make them cut into wafers with lasers, etc. So we might as well go and buy the lasers, uh, buy the wafers you want from international market. So I think the government seems to have taken that line uh, because uh, recently there was a MOU signed with the uh, US Secretary for Trade uh, between our, <clears throat> our minister, Mr. Piyush Goel, and his counterpart in the US. And they have signed an MOU to make sure supply chains will not be a uh, uh, problem for India. You were still insured. So I would think I would read it as that uh, the wafers are going to be made available for us for whatever applications we have in mind. And I'll touch upon the applications a little later. Uh, so step one, we are not doing. Step two is going to be uh, putting all the superimposing all the circuit on the wafer and then cutting them into dies. That requires a lot of infrastructure facility. We don't have it in the country. And um, that depends also. You had mentioned uh, the junction width of a transistor is so many nanometer. So all the machinery which are required uh, for the step two uh, have to be totally imported. There are very few companies who make it. The most leading company is ASML from uh, Denmark who supply this equipment. So you have to make sure that uh, step two would require a lot of facilities to be set up in the country for uh, photolithography and then uh, making sure those etching is done in very clean surroundings, uh, high quality water, high quality uh, uninterrupted power supply. So many requirements are there for this particular facility. And uh, Yes, we may do it, but I, my reading is that it will take three, four years before we set up a facility which can do this work, even if somebody is prepared to give the equipment to you. So step two may come, but come a little later. So I have a feeling that uh, India, through its uh, sources, uh, as well as with the help of some Western countries who have signed uh, uh, MOU with us, we will get the dyes which are already being made in some other country which are available. So that means step two also we don't do in the country now. We may do it after five years because that's the time it will take to set up the facility. So we buy dyes and we come to step three. Step three is design which you are familiar. So we are going to fast track our activity straight away to the chips we want in the country. And what are the chips which we want, which will support our industrial activity, essentially? Uh, I think one of them is going to be uh, related to uh, uh, power sector. Uh, uh, by the way, the chips are of different uh, categories. you got digital chips, which are called digital ICs. you got some ICs uh, which are doing analog work uh, through a sensor or through some activation, etc. So they're called analog ICs. And the third category is called power ICs, which will handle higher uh, current, higher power requirements, which is what we want immediately for our uh, renewable energy programs. We require a lot of chips in this area, which we have been importing otherwise. And just for information, the width of the junction in nanometers, which you had mentioned, in nanometers for power uh, ICs are around 100, 125 nanometers, but analog may be around 30, 40. And it's the digital one, which are lower, 20, 15, like that. So 
we may not uh, we may be able to design in step 3 whatever we want provided that is of immediate requirement or industry as i mentioned to you power is important maybe even automobile sector we may be uh, we doing some ic's which don't require a uh, very small uh, junction width so we may do that design for ourselves in the country and we have to definitely do step 4 step 4 is putting the dies which you have bought from international market as per the design made by let us say tatas in bangalore tatas have made the design earlier they were making for somebody else in the west now it is going to be made for another uh, uh, entrepreneur in india so they will <clears throat> put all the dies which they have bought from uh, ab abroad from the foreign market and then they will do the connection and they will encapsulate it uh, epoxy covering is given they will put a nice little package outside it give all the external connections and the chip will come out so my feeling is that uh, india will continue to do step 3 in a big way we are already doing it will get accelerated more and step 4 we will be doing in the country so that we can have step 2 will take 5 years uh, to set up and operationalize and de-risk and make sure the quality levels are very high step 1 uh, i don't think uh, india will embark on maybe uh, uh, they may do it after uh, five years if the step two is all right. Mm. So uh, it's a very calibrated manner in which the India Semiconductor Mission, uh, which the government has given a lot of money and the government has given a uh, lot of promises uh, to industries who will join this mission, uh, be it uh, for uh, the hardware production or for design or for uh, chips of general 11 to solar uh, panels. They also require, that is our immediate requirement for renewable energy. So there is an implication for us uh, as far as uh, our renewable energy program is concerned, our uh, uh, climate uh, uh, control, various other programs. We do require chips which we have been importing hitherto. We may go into those areas and I don't see uh, there will be immediate hardy to rush into some chips uh, which are um, going to be for uh, uh, production of uh, defense aerospace equipment. It will take some time uh, because uh, uh, the design uh, as well as uh, testing and then uh, prototyping etc. will will take time and it is it has to also meet the various uh, uh, mill quality, military quality so that will take some little time. So it, essentially it will be initially only for uh, industry 4.0 applications, renewable energy, and even 5G communication, uh, we may be able to uh, bring in our own ICs by, uh, let's say, 2030. Uh, I think that'll be a reasonable uh, time frame for us to get our own uh, Indian uh, manufactured uh, uh, ICs. But till then, uh, we are dependent on somebody else and we have already uh, a huge uh, war, chip war, which is, uh, is already broken out in the US uh, because uh, 10 years back, a lot of US companies, a lot of US nationals who were experts in this field were able to uh, advance their uh, technological uh, uh, research, etc., with the help of some Chinese firms. And the US government had permitted uh, some of these companies to have factories in China, but owned by U.S. people. Mm. So now, uh, now U.S. has come with a Chip Act in sometime in September 22, by which by law, a U.S. citizen cannot uh, support uh, a, a venture in China, which is dealing with uh, certain categories of semiconductor. And uh, they have also formed uh, uh, Chip 4 Alliance uh, with Korea, South Korea, Japan, and the EU to make sure that uh, e uh, within this group, they are able to support uh, each other. As I told you, there are four steps in uh, chip production. So you may find uh, there is uh, a capability which is existing in, uh, let's say, Japan which could be for uh, design and testing, etc. But 
as far as step one is concerned, he may not be. I'm just giving an example. So mm -hmm. within this chip plus four alliance, they have been able to find that they're taking each other's help and progressing with uh, the chip production and trying to keep uh, uh, China out of it. Uh, it's going to be uh, important for us because a lot of uh, our uh, present day imports are coming from uh, China, but they are all mostly for uh, uh, solar panels, uh, for renewable energy programs, uh, etc. So uh, it, it is not directly related to uh, defense and uh, aerospace applications. Yeah. That's... I mean, the problem with that I see, sir, it's, it's, uh, see, I'm not a technical person, so it's, 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 it's really going to blow out smoke from my brain. But the problem that I see is that the a country's security today is going to be challenged if he's not able to uh, get his hands on the supplies as he needs. Uh, you could literally cripple a nation down to the ground if you don't you know send him what he needs in terms of basics with regards let's say uh security medical you know so on and so forth so that's that's the challenge that we see uh, with regards to a challenge of security within india so are we i won't say self-sufficient but are we able to see ourselves being self-sufficient within the next three to five years as far as electronic equipment is concerned, uh, let's let's after all finally uh, the end user uh, is interacting with the electronic equipment, yeah, and all yeah, these yeah, chips yeah. are sitting inside yeah. the electronic equipment. Today, uh, whatever electronic equipment you are uh, manufacturing in the country, uh, be it uh, Bharat Electronics or be it uh, Tata's or Mahindra's, they are all importing chips. There is no doubt about it. Every one of them is importing chips which are coming from abroad. Uh, China may be competitive, so you may be buying from them. But now there may be some restrictions, so you may have to buy from elsewhere. Uh, so if you want to progress Make in India and uh, you want to be Atmanar uh, Bata on defense, then you have to establish this in a decent time frame, which I think is 2030, in my understanding, and not uh, before that. There are a lot of people come forward uh, to start uh, this uh, semiconductor industry. Uh, with, the government is giving almost 50% of the project cost as incentive. So uh, there is a fair amount of uh, excitement in the industry. But the government has said anyone who wants to start in India, it has to be necessarily based on international support. I don't think there's any person in India who can say, I will make the chips tomorrow and I will start making it. No. I think there are a lot of expertise, a lot of machines and a lot of quality programs required, which we do require support from people who already done this job earlier. So our requirement to do it ourselves is definitely there, but with a time frame of five, six years. Second point, with Industry 4.0 coming in a big way uh, to make sure our industries are competitive, as well as 5G about to come. 5G is almost inducted in some of the cities. So it is going to spread its footage, uh, footprint quite uh, wide. So we do require uh, equipment which have got special function ICs sitting inside them. The third, the third aspect is the most crucial. Last year, India imported $54 billion of chips. So when $54 billion of chips they imported, so when the uh, when an announcement is made, India has electronic equipment, uh, let us say uh, 10 lakh crores worth of uh, electronic equipment being made in the country, and its contribution of GDP towards GDP is 2.25 percent. I'm talking of electronic equipment mm -hmm. made by Bharat Electronics, uh, ECIL, or uh, Tata's, Mahindra, all, all put together. Please remember, in that, they have to first pay $54 billion, which is the import. So it gets offset on the GDP because uh, you are paid for those uh, chips which are come from abroad. So the way induction of technology is happening in digital programs, as well as in uh, 
5G. Then you also have many uh, AI programs coming in. More and more digital equipment is required in the country. So it is expected that our imports of chips, if you don't manufacture in India, we keep on buying from outside. And let's assume that somebody is prepared to sell it also. But the bill will be $80 billion in another two, three years. And our oil bill, crude oil bill, today is only $95 billion. So very soon, you will find the chip bill is close to the oil bill. And oil bill is uh, reducing. One, because renewable energy is coming in. So our demand for oil is coming down. And there is a natural uh, aversion uh, to fossil fuels from the point of carbonization. So people are trying to avoid it. So you will find the oil bill is going to drop. And the chip bill may overtake the oil. So you have a requirement from the economy point of view. All these years they were telling oil is so expensive. We are dependent on it. We are selling so much of money. We are spending, buying. Yes. But now you'll be spending more money on chips. So there is definitely a compulsion on the government to make sure that we produce in the country. And as I told you earlier, we may have to avoid step one uh, with some reliable uh, supply source for wafers and embark on cheap, uh, step two, step three and four. Three are already comfortable. Step two will take some time. Step four is something which we can uh, easily uh, progress into. So I, I feel that uh, the line in which we are going is uh, perfectly all right. Uh, there are some uh, issues uh, regarding uh, manpower. Uh, we, we, if you are going to embark on so much of uh, uh, indigenization of semiconductor industry, then we'll require a huge number of uh, uh, suitable, suitably qualified engineers, mm -hmm. which uh, at the moment could be uh, a challenge. So the government will have to parallelly uh, look at how they are going to get so many uh, quality uh, manpower for undertaking all this fortunately fortunately many of this are coming only in private sector uh, and not in public sector uh, public sector I mean they'll have their own restrictions of uh, 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 choosing and selecting and etc private sector may be able to get uh, a lot of people from abroad a lot of expats who may like to who are been in this field abroad and who may like to come back and they can be in some leading positions uh, uh, in the in their factory. So as I see going ahead, uh, uh, the chip complexity is only becoming uh, oh, more and more uh, intricate. Uh, people are already talking about uh, system of chips. That means you have yeah. many chips uh, made by different one, but all able to interact and able to make a, a system. Sometime back, we heard uh, IOTs. Uh, internet of things now we already the internet of things have become a uh, system of chips and uh, an artificial intelligence also coming into those uh, development so there's definitely going to be a, a, a demand for us to make sure that uh, we we are at least uh, about 20 percent self-sufficient and uh, the rest of the things we'll have to uh, import so defense and aerospace i don't see an immediate impact uh, there is a little bit of time available for us and uh, we should be able to uh, bring in uh, indian made uh, chips into the electronic equipment uh, let us say by uh, by the time we start uh, assembling uh, some of our own designs and putting it there so that could be as i told you four years five years from now from now fair enough sir so uh course i love to talk about this is quite a learning experience i've really not dwelled onto the topic of electronics and chips on my channel so this is probably this is my first one but uh i my 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 request would be to actually we'll do a follow-up of this when we talk about the indian chip industry and what where does it stand and what kind of research and this and that so we, we could we could look at that and the connection of that particular thing with the Indian Armed Forces is something that we could look at in probably in the next discussion. Uh, you wanted to say something, sir? 
Yeah, I want to say something in the book because there are already four or five companies which are uh, doing pretty well on the design side. That's a step three. Uh, and they have already have some international uh, uh, repeated work to their credit. So they are doing well. Tata is one of them. HCL is another. Uh, then uh, now you find uh, Vedanda is trying to uh, tie up with Foxconn. But that could well be something to do for our uh, uh, chips required for our mobile sets or a 5G. Because soon all of us will want 5G compatible mobiles. A large percentage of the present users, 4G users, will uh, switch over to 5G uh, telephones. So they may want 5G compatible telephones, which is available in the market anyway, uh, but they are all with imported chips. So uh, in, that's an area where there's a lot of uh, uh, throughput is there uh, for the industry. So they may try to identify that chip to be uh, done. So the companies which have come forward, only two, three of them across the initial, uh, initial barriers of uh, uh, technology, uh, how they will get, how they will, what is the program. like, And it has not gone past uh, the higher levels in the government to say, okay, you are clear to do it because there's a requirement to make sure that uh, because 50% of the cost is being put by government for each of the projects. 50% is again dependent on uh, what is the junction width. Narrower the junction, you get 50%. Mm. But mm. if you do a broad one, like 65 nanometer, then you'll get only 30%. So, because the equipment which are required for the lower nanometers are much more expensive. So, government is in the letter, in the policy which has come, have also spelled out what sort of support they will give. And uh, some support is also being given for making LEDs and LCDs uh, panels. You and me are interacting through LED panel now, but the LED panel is not made in the country. Mm, no LED mm. panels are made in the country. No LCD panels are made in the country. They are all imported. But government is saying, now you please make them because there's a huge requirement for the entertainment industry as well as for laptops and the various other panels which are there and equipment, etc. We need to have this LED LCD. So government has said, okay, we will fund 50% of the project cost for you. Uh, identify a method by which you can set up a factory in the country. That may happen because that is more related to... Uh, uh, commercial equipment, of course, also required for some military equipment, but more related to commercial equipment. So that we may have some progress, uh, as I told you earlier, and for renewable energy programs. Okay. It's, a, it's a starting and I think they have carved out this uh, scheme very well. Uh, it is going to be a, a tough call for the people who are going to set up this because there are two resources which are very, very crucial for setting up a semiconductor plant. Uh, I'm including step one in this. Uh, that is water and power. You require large quantities with high levels of purity. When I say power, that means it should be very uninterrupted and you should have good quality power. So if you're avoiding step one, then uh, this will be slightly reduced. But these are two important resources which are required. And these are not two resources which we are very comfortable with in many states in the country. So for a person to identify a site for setting up uh, factories, uh, one has to, this has to be a very, very important aspect. I'm sure uh, people who are getting into detail of this would be studying in, uh, in great amount of uh, details how they will be doing it. But it is something which has to be watched, uh, how, how it is picking up. In the next, uh, I would say by end of this year, we would have some clarity uh, how and what will be their products, how that will make a meaning to Indian economy, how it will make a meaning to defense and aerospace, if there is a, uh, if there is an impact of that particular product which they're going to do, and uh, how the government parallelly will take care of the human capital which is required for uh, these type of uh, ventures. So uh, interesting times ahead. And uh, I'm sure uh, uh, after a few months or by end of the year, we will have uh, some more clarity. Yeah. Yes. Mm. But the mission document is very well written. Uh, and uh, it is uh, it is being progressed by uh, many uh, 
uh, ministries, there is a joint program because there is uh, there is a requirement for power, there's a requirement for uh, water, there's a requirement for uh, uh, to be done by uh, Ministry of Electronics. Uh, so, uh, it, in fact, they formed a group under which they are able to, uh, it's a multidisciplinary approach, and I'm sure uh, we will have some success uh, in this front very soon. Hope so. So, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You, you've been, I mean, very, very interesting, clear way of putting it across. Just the last short comment on one factor, which is the fact factor that I want to bring in a little bit of geopolitics into the game before we, before we leave it. Uh, there was an in interesting statement that came out from one of the U.S. lawmakers, and I found it to be shocking. Uh, which said that in case the Chinese do attack Taiwan, the first thing that the U.S. would do is bomb the TSMC. Yeah, TSMC you know, is one of the, uh, you know, uh, if you look at, it's very interesting. Uh, so I'll go back to my steps. There are very few countries which do from step one to four. Right. And uh, Intel is one of them in the world, which is with U.S. TS, TSMC does not do, uh, does not do step three. He expects design to be given to him. It's a damn good fabrication facility. He will make the chip for you as per your design. Your design means you may have engaged a designer who will come there. They will do it. They'll make it for you and give it. And therefore, there is a lot of strength uh, in, uh, in TSMC's products by both quantity as well as quality. And uh, if somebody has made a statement like this, uh, is very really right because uh, that is one of the uh, primary sources of uh, low width junction semiconductors uh, in the world. They, of course, they got competition from Korea as well now, but primary leader in the world is from Taiwan, and uh, they have to uh, uh, make sure their uh, supply. To, uh, to the West, because some have been funded even by uh, US. So the uh, supply to the West, as well as to other countries in Europe, will take place. Uh, hopefully, uh, when many of our re re requirements, which will come uh, in the future for defense and aerospace, uh, will also come from uh, uh, fabrication facilities. They're, they're called foundries uh, in uh, in semiconductor industry, factories which make uh, these uh, uh, chips, uh, in, especially in step two, they're called foundries. So there are many uh, foundries uh, which are in uh, Taiwan, and TSMC is one of the uh, is the leader. In that. And in fact, hmm. he controls a huge percentage. I think almost till about uh, 30, 35 percentage of. Uh, uh, world's production of uh, high quality chips are from there. So uh, China is also apparently trying to set up, but it will take some time, not so much as Taiwan has done now. They're they irritating Taiwan. They, 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 uh, uh, they cut the internet of Taiwan uh, two months back, uh, the undersea cable. So China yeah, does. For, uh, uh, Matsui Island, yes, sir. That's right, Matsui Island. So I think we, we have uh, just looked at this uh, topic uh, from um, uh, non-electronic engineers. Yeah, uh, it's a bird's eye uh, perspective. So yes, absolutely. Yes, bird's eye perspective to look at how complex it is and uh, how India can uh, make some progress in, uh, uh, in this direction in a calibrated manner. And uh, hopefully we should have some uh, success very soon. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So hoping for that, hoping for that quite desperately, as a matter of fact. Uh, thank, so thank I'd, you. I'd like to thank you. I mean, this has been quite an interesting discussion. I mean, of course, I'm not a very technical person, but uh, you brought it out in a very simple way. So that's, that's kept all the, you know, the big jargons away. And that's, that's interesting to a lot of us. Why? Because normally we guys, you know, non technical people push all this stuff away. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we don't understand this. But they, they'll just want to take the concept and just leave it apart. But thank you for bringing the the in-depth part of it in a very simple uh, sort of a discussion, which which any layman can also understand. 
Uh, so as I said, uh, I'd like to, of course, continue the relation of you having uh, spent time with me and, of course, uh, able to educate us in certain different areas with your with your experience. And I'd like to thank you for this time and in advance for the next one as well. Uh, till next thank time, you. sir, thank for another thank you. threadbare. Thank you. Thank you, Adi. Thank you very much.